Hey everyone, it's Kine, and welcome back to another makeup transformation. Today's costume is this haunted mummy using special effects gelatin to create that stringy skin texture. All of the details on how to make gelatin will be in the description, but here is a basic breakdown of what you're going to want to have in order to create this look. Let's get started. So I'm actually reusing my gelatin that was left over from my Harvey Dent half burn face tutorial. I just saved it and melted it down again, but if you want to learn how to make it from scratch, you can check the description. But anyway, I've added some skin tone foundation to it so that it would be a flesh tone color. You could always just paint it your skin color afterwards once it's dry on your face, but it would be kind of hard to paint every single nook and cranny, and this way it saves a lot of time. I'm gonna give it some time to cool down, so before applying it, I'm gonna glue down my brows to the face with glue sticks so that that waxy surface will protect the brow hairs from being ripped up by gelatin. I'm also putting on a bald cap. You don't really need a bald cap because you could always just put gauze or tissue up on your head in order to cover your hair. But I had it and I wanted to try it out for the first time. Usually with a bald cap you would want to cut off the excess around your ears so your ears can show and you could hear things. And also you'd want to blend it to your forehead with makeup. But I wanted to hide my ears for the look anyway and we're also going to cover that line with gelatin later. So I just decided to leave it as it is. Now I'm taking black face paint and I'm blackening the eyes, the nose, and the mouth area. All the negative spaces where there wouldn't be much skin. That way when there's gelatin over top, we won't have to paint all around it since these areas will already have black underneath as a background. Now we get to apply the gelatin, of course making sure that it's kind of warm and it's not going to burn your skin. First putting it around my mouth area because I've created teeth that I want to stick on first. I made these out of nail tips that I just got at Walmart and I just cut around the ends to make the teeth and I'm sticking them on with more gelatin as a glue and then applying an additional layer over top to act as like gums and also to cover up the tops of the teeth so they don't look so long and huge. Next just apply gelatin everywhere except for the eyes and the tip of the nose. The eyes for obvious reasons but I'm not doing the nose since that area tends to like decay pretty quickly since it's just cartilage. You know like mummies, zombies and skeletons usually don't have noses so that part is just going to be black. You can see I'm using a chopstick to apply the gelatin because it only picks up a little bit and it leaves a long string which we want. You can also use the end of a makeup brush for this but I just want it to feel connected to my Asian culture. Just don't use an actual brush for this as long as you're using a solid object. The leftover gelatin should peel right off when it's dry. Anyway, as I was saying, we want the skin to be all crusty and stringy since it's like old and decayed. And as you can see, I'm also taking that quite upwards through the bald cap and I've covered the border between the bald cap and the skin. When all is said and done, we are going to paint everything a flesh tone color. Even if you've added foundation to the gelatin like I have, it's still a good idea to go over the finished application so that everything is the same color. And also, we need to paint the part of the bald cap that's going to be exposed since it's not my skin tone. I've chosen a color that's a bit more cool toned and ashy, like almost even grey, since I wanted the mummy to look kind of lifeless and dead. Next, taking a mixture of yellow and brown cream paint, I'm painting the teeth so that they're not so pearly white, which I probably should have done before I put them on. I also decided I didn't really want the eyes to be all black, so I painted that the same skin color, but I left the nose and the mouth pretty dark. Next, I'm going in with a dark brown on a small brush and I'm deepening some of the contours as well as those large crevices and drips and holes in the gelatin. That way the skin is more textured and all the strings and bumps and blemishes are just more apparent and visible. And then blend everything together with your base color. I'm also going in with a bit of green to add kind of like a moldy dimension to the face. Only in certain areas, if you want to add like blood or bruises or even more infected, decayed molds, it's up to you. Just be creative. But now I'm going to apply the gauze. I bought four rolls, which might have been a little bit overkill, but they were only like a dollar a box at the dollar store. If you're not bald, your first focus should be to cover your hair with the gauze. Otherwise, you can leave some of the head exposed. But otherwise, you know, just follow your heart and apply where you think it looks good. If you're doing a full body costume, obviously you might want to get a lot more rolls than this, but for me, I just focused on like the chest up. In my plastic surgery makeup tutorial, I did like a similar head wrap covering using toilet paper, which is definitely a cheaper alternative, which you probably definitely already have at home. But toilet paper is a lot more fragile and it'll rip a lot easier, especially when it gets wet, which for my purposes, 
I'm gonna get the gauze wet using water-based face paint since I need to paint it with browns and red so that it looks old and stained. And I used a mixture of red and yellow and green to create a brown, but later I found that just the red and green alone was enough to create the color that I desired. In retrospect, it probably would have been a lot easier if I had just painted the entire roll before putting it on. That way I could be sure that I didn't miss a spot. And also I could have just dipped the entire roll in like coffee or tea to stain it. But the plus side of doing it this way when it's already applied is that it's going to look patchy and uneven, which adds to that grungy, dirty aspect of the look. Just make sure that if you're going out like this, the back of your head looks fine because the white bandages kind of ruin the illusion. The last step is to add my white mesh camo eyes contacts, which I always leave for the end since they impair my vision. Also, I just like being dramatic. This is the finished look. It's old, crusty, creepy, and spooky. But you know, that's it for my Madonna makeup tutorial. If you want to see more content like this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Join me tomorrow for a brand new makeup tutorial and a brand new way to learn how to ruin your skin. Bye!